Ladies and gentlemen, honorable audience, we would like to thank you on behalf of Olive Pharma for accepting our invitation and being here tonight. Today we have the pleasure and the great honor to receive Professor Henri Joyeux, who is a surgical oncologist and an internationally acclaimed specialist on the prevention of diseases of our civilization by nutrition. This will be the theme of tonight's conference with an emphasis on olive antioxidants. We live olive oil every day, especially in Morocco, where we see olive trees all of the time. But how can they benefit our health? It is tonight's theme. Once again, welcome. Please give a warm applause for Professor Henri Joyeux. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. So, thanks to Mr. Otman Akalal to have invited me to talk about such a subject which may soon render Morocco with no sick people. Thanks to you, of course. Doctors, who would turn in 2013, in this century, towards the prevention against the civilization diseases, and also the recidivism one. I'm a surgeon and a cancer specialist in Montpellier. In the 22 French anti-cancer centers, we are swamped with work. Because, in more than half of the cases, according to the Academy of Medicines of France, more than half of the subject cases show that eating habits are the major responsibilities for the cancer of the breast, prostate, colon, rectum, lymphoma, and other civilization diseases. The diabetes type 2, which is not even genetic but due to food, costs 10 billion euros per year to France. Overweight is a problem because the attempts to be fit, by the way, we don't say the word obesity in France, these attempts cost 10 billion euros per year for France and 14 billion euros for the cancer each year. That gives 34 in total. It means a deficit of 14 billion each year in Social Security. All this is our fault. We, doctors, because we are too sensitive to pharmaceutical laboratories that lead people who are not sick. These laboratories target healthy people with their medicines. So they propose to us, in order to prevent people with osteoporosis, menopause, as if they were diseases, thus we prescribe the medicines, as if they were efficient. We should change our eating habits. Today, what are you going to learn about is absolutely important. You are so lucky to have something you know well for centuries, olive oil. Olive oil with an exceptional quality. If in the past our freehold lands of the south of France and all the countries around the Mediterranean, there are 22 countries, if our forefathers drank the olive oil, they didn't know, well, why? Only because it had a good taste and because it grows everywhere. What they didn't really know is what the oil contains inside such as polyphenols, which exists with an exceptional quantity in the olive oil, which does not exist neither in Spain, south of France, nor in Tunisia. 
It exists only in your country. In some places, the olive trees are planted in a very clever way, so that they would give the best they could. Like in case of a human being, he gives his best only when he goes through trouble or when passing through a very harsh moment in his life. It's the same thing for the olive trees. Because it's always sunny and there is a shortage of water, it does everything to survive and gets ready to give its best to survive. I recently saw my colleague Jean-Louis Etienne, who has been on foot through the Arctic regions. He told me that when he fell into a crevasse, he thought he would die in the ice water. He carried his chest out of the ice and felt his heart still beating. He said, since my heart still beats, I'm still alive. Thus, with willingness and courage, he could get out of the ice and survive. It is the same with the olive oil. It's able to give 30 times more in your land. As you know, polyphenols exist in red wine in Bordeaux. In Asia, it's said that it exists in tea. It's true, but it's little comparing to the quantity you can have on your land. With two fabulous products which are in it, and which are hydroxytyrosol and tyrosol, you can notice that Olive e Plus can give you 30 times more. One spoonful of Olive e Plus 30X is more beneficial than any other oil. When you present your 30 spoonfuls of regular olive oil, women are not happy because it is a lot of energy to keep in shape. Therefore, we should focus on the provision of polyphenols, which has fantastic virtues at the level of our health, with olive e force, of course. I was in a conference in France. I was in Brussels on Sunday. I was three days before in Louvain-la-Leuve. There were 700 people there. When I asked who knows Alzheimer's disease, everybody raised their hand. But when I said who wants to have Alzheimer's, the audience had dropped their hands. Well, you will have the possibility to have 2,000 times more in this hyperconcentrated olive, 2,000 times more in hydroxytyrosol than ordinary oil. You are not going to drink liters, but instead you will take it in the form of small capsules, two capsules in the morning and two in the evening. Your brain will be satisfied. In addition to that, you will provide it with a good Mediterranean diet. You want to have soft skin? So you go to L'Oreal and buy their products, sure. But you are going to need pounds of that product to actually have a satisfying result. These products contain hydroquinone, which tends to penetrate inside the skin and cause skin injuries. However, hydroxytyrosol, along with the arbutin on your land, is the only lotion which will soften your skin. This local cream is biologically and organically certified. We shouldn't forget about our offsprings. As you may know, in France, out of 820,000 women who give birth to children, only 60 to 63 percent breastfeed their babies. They are overwhelmed by the idea that the pollution will be transferred to the baby via the mum's milk, while the latter is the best nutrient for a child. The relationship between omega-3, fatty acid, and omega-6 is best found in the mum's milk. If you give the child a bottle instead of her mother's breasts, you will need the olivey baby kids, which is useful because it has the same omega-3, omega-6 relationship as that of the mother's milk. 
To understand things quite well, we would talk scientifically. As you may know, the olive is divided in three parts. 20% of oil, 30% of olive pulp and stone, and the water part which is known as olive oil wastewater. All these are common to people. As far as I'm concerned, the farmer is the first caste member of health. The second caste is me. That's to say that each one of us is the manager of his health. The third one is the medic in charge of making diagnosis and say, there's a cancer. It's too late. We should do some x-rays, chemotherapy. You may say it's too much. How will I support the chemo? How will I bear a surgical intervention of four hours to heal without infection? All this is obviously important. We should know that the period of ripening the word, ver, means will ripen while there is maturity between mid-October and December. That will, of course, get the fruit of this work. Here, the contact in polyphenol will reach the maximum. At this point, we will be able to extract it and use it. According to the chemical composition of the olive, I recall it again for water. I said 22% of oil, 0.5 to 1% of polyphenol. You can notice that it's little in polyphenols, but it's high at the quality level. This is the key point with polyphenols. Little quantity, but high quality. Notice the phenolic composition, phenolic monomers for the chemists, or phenolic polymers. You see in the red, the hydroxytyrosol, tyrosol at the bottom, are the two main polyphenols that you don't find so much in wine. You won't find them in teas so much, even the best ones. So in the wines, the teas, you might find tannin, anthocyanin, indeed, but you will not find this hydroxytyrosol, which is important for good health. While the origin of this hydroxytyrosol, as you see, is the fact that it has deglication. The oleuropine, which is going to lose its sugar and lead to oleuropine aglycon, which gives you hydroxytyrosol immediately. So if you look more closely into the olive oil, 15 milligrams to a kilogram, in the distribution, the olive oil wastewater represent 100 milligrams per liter than leaves. All these are important things, even in the leaves. We should not neglect them. We will explore this when talking about high blood tension issues. The cardiologists are being continuously lobbied by laboratories to prescribe hypertensive drugs. Before getting to the hypertensives, we should first turn toward good quality products, which allow you to take care of the patient without prescribing him medicines, which may cause him or her a handicap. The biological effects are very important to consider. Imagine our patient or ourselves. We will abort it. We will do that orally. We'll find the hydroxytyrosol and tyrosol elements, the polyphenols, in the small intestine and into the colon. Especially in the right one, where we notice the genesis of vitamin K and digestive absorption, which is useful before the selection of waste. Concentration in time, we will see, reaches its maximum in plasma 5 to 10 minutes after ingestion, meaning there is already an absorption done at the gastric and the small intestines level. 
The transport solution will be aqueous, since the hydroxytyrosol, as I said, is hydrofit. But it may also be transported with the oil. So, if we follow the experiment in the form of a radioactive hydroxytyrosol injected intravenously, this experiment is done, of course, on animals, not on human beings. In this experiment, we have a half-life in the blood, which is from one to two minutes. Therefore, it's an uptake use five minutes later, in the kidneys. Antioxidant, anti-aging and anti-cancer effect. I remind you that the oxidation, which we will see in a few moments, is premature aging. When a man has a prostate cancer at 50, then he is 50 years ahead. Being diagnosed with prostate or breast cancer at 50 may be dangerous. And therefore we can notice that these products get to the brain because they are able to cross the hemoencephalic barrier. It's not easy to cross it. All products do not pass the brain. This latter singles out what it needs. For example, it needs sugar, which you can find in fresh fruit, not in compote. Not in yogurt. Not in lactose. You have it in your local fresh fruit, such as orange, kiwi, apples, lemons and all vegetables, provided that you don't overcook them. Let's see the bioavailability and the pharmacokinetics of these products. You have here on the left the corresponding bioavailability to a solution of olive oil with hydroxytyrosol and for the small b with the tyrosol. You can see the difference between a solution of olive oil and an aqueous solution. The bioavailability is different. The olive oil is more powerful than the aqueous one. Let's look at metabolism. There are three types of chemical reactions. Oxidation, methylation, or a mixture of both of them. Oxidation and methylation. We are not going in details, but the information of these products which we know today and which our forefathers did not know. We cannot blame them for prescribing olive oil because they were cultural habits, but today in the science era, science which is about to demonstrate that our forefathers were right. We can now scientifically prove it. Well, oxidation with what? As you can see, the enzymes of alcohol. But be careful. Don't think polyphenol means alcohol. Polyphenol is not an alcohol product. But it's an antioxidant and an anti-aging agent which has a particular metabolism and a total bioavailability. You know the bioavailability. Imagine that you take, for example, as you see here, 10 grams of vitamin C from the pharmacy. Pay him just half of the price because you have the other half in your urine. You give me 10 grams, but in reality there are only 5 that are useful to me. That is what the bioavailability means. Here, bioavailability is total. For hydroxytyrosol, since it is a natural product, its bioavailability is at 100%. Let's now look at the antioxidant effect. I remind the journalists that it's important to remind them that we could explain it to the public. What does oxidation mean? It means an aggression. It means a destruction. When we have to repaint an old portrait of our grandfather, for example, and we want our paint to be solid for 50 years, we should remove the rust. Then we put a special product whose colors are red and orange. We call it minium, which is an antioxidant. After that, when it gets dry, we can paint it with the preferred color. Well, it's the same thing. It means that we should know how to protect ourselves. You have here a shima, which is perfectly realized by our colleague from Fez, Professor Benamli. 
who is the author of the book which I advise you to read. It's simple, clear and scientific with all numbers. I read it with much pleasure. Why? Because I learned a lot from the book. I saw numbers, realizations as well as scientific demonstrations. You see, the oxidation reactions will lead to the formation of these molecules, which will make the peroxidation of lipid, oxidation of proteins, oxidation of DNA. God knows that DNA needs to be protected, and which allows us to understand what we call epigenetic. Yes, we have genetics. We have been discovering them for a few years in the science of epigenetic. The most suitable place for epigenetic is nutrition. Since we have breakfast in the morning, lunch in the afternoon, and dinner in the evening, certainly we have epigenetic because we are breathing. We know that we can eliminate through sweating, through sport and physical activities. The products we're grading because they are lipophilic in the fatty tissue under the skin. This drawing is remarkably expressive. You have on the right a good protected cell, and you see its membrane, and you see that the oxidation products doesn't have access, because there's a good membrane, meaning that the cell is well nourished. There are good lipids, which will protect the cell in its outskirts, whereas on the other side, it has a weak membrane that will be easily penetrated and will eventually activate DNA to turn a sleepy cell into a cancer cell. Therefore, hydroxytyrosol, polyphenol of olive oil, olive plus, olive force, etc., along with their metabolites, are more effective against the oxidation of lipids and proteins than vitamins C and E. And you'll see that in the diagram that follows. Look to the far right. You have this ORAC, which is the oxygen radical absorbance capacity, which for vitamin C, you can see, we are at 2,100. We could be proud of this. Long live vitamin C. But as you see the grapes, T. epicathecine, oleuropean, of olive oil, the resveratrol, the hydroxytorosol, you can see the differences. Okay, so you have an antioxidant effect, absolutely fabulous, that all doctors of France, Morocco, Spain, Germany, Italy, and all of Europe should know because it has this basis for prevention and the basis of nutrition to prevent deadly diseases. We can ask the question, what is the toxicity of this hydroxytyrosol? Is it able to be toxic? I remember one day I was in China with Li Nu Spulin, and there was a Chinese colleague who was 85 years old and who was in good health. I discussed with him, not in Chinese, but rather in little English and little French. I asked him what was his secret to be in good shape at this age of 85 years old. He answered, moderation. And it is the same thing as you will see yourselves. There's no toxic effect up to 2 grams of hydroxytyrosol per kilogram. With rats, of course. Let's not try it with humans and let's not try to find out what dose will drown someone of hydroxytyrosol. As for the rat, there is an important dose of 2.5 to 3.5, which corresponds in reality to a monumental amount of olive oil. We would have to be forced fed with olive oil, which is impossible in a human case. So we can say that it is not toxic. Let's now go deep in our specialities. You are cardiologists, you are generalists, and you see people who suffer from hypertension and who you worry about. You see people you send to the cardiologist because they are resistant to treatments you give them, and you don't know what to do to reduce weight. You can see that there's a kind of pre-diabetes that is not here, but is close to happen. So you were trying to find a solution for your patients. 
Look at this phenolic components in the prevention of heart problems. You know very well that the Mediterranean diet, when there were myocardium attacks in France, we send you for a month in a home to make rehabilitation, change your diet, put you on a bike. Then, when you leave, you go back to where you were. Why? Simply because they don't advise you well. They would say, yes, we will place you a stent, two stents or make you a venous transplantation at the level of your heart. All you are told when you leave is Mediterranean nutrition. So you think about the Blue Sea, Mediterranean sand, beautiful girls, but you are not told what nutrition means. Look here, it is still very interesting. You have on the one hand diet, I don't like to say the word diet, but instead the way to eat when one is Mediterranean. Meat, fish, and you see that the highest part on the graph represents what we should do the least of, while the lower one is for what we should do the most, a daily sporting activity. People tell me, I walk to work, but all the two leggers are going to work on foot. It has no sporting value. What we need, me and my wife, we hike, the Ventoux. This latter is 21 kilometers far. They ask me how I do it. Is it by bike or by car? I go by bicycle. Oh yeah, by an electric bicycle, they say. Not at all, not by an electrical bicycle. I do with the help of my calves. In the Tour de France, the bicycle riders spend an hour riding when they are doped. I am three times older than them. I do it in three hours, but without doping. That means we should keep regularly doing physical activities. Obviously, I don't do that every day, but I do it at least twice a year. Do you see these vegetables, fruits, all these elements? Milk, yogurt, we should almost remove. We will be back to them in a few moments. Let's look a bit at the correlation between the consumption of olive oil in the incidence of heart problems. You have for olive oil, small a, all the way up in the graph. You see the countries. Greece. We were there last year with one of my colleagues, one of my students in Greece. When my wife was making a salad to her friend Athena and wanted to add some olive oil, Athena told her, wait a minute, you barely put any olive oil on the salad. We put four times more. Because down there in Greece, they do not sprinkle with oil, but a lot of it. Spain, Italy, Portugal. This is for the correlation between the consumption of olive oil and heart problems. I don't know if you've ever tasted American or English food. Frankly speaking, they have no taste. In England, they have a queen with a palate. But with regards to nutrition, it's a disaster. If you eat in these countries, frankly, there's a lot of work to be done for the English and the Americans to eat Mediterranean, as in our countries. These phenolic compounds, they are useful in the prevention of heart problems, ensured by some clinical studies. You see, in Italy, in Naples, 180 cases were suffering from metabolic disorders and followed a Mediterranean diet which is rich in olive oil, regular Italian olive oil. After two years, they obtained an improvement of the endothelial function in the vessels level. They decreased in the blood pressure. So, as for cholesterol, you differentiate HDL, which is good from LDL, which is bad. Reduction of LDL, HDL increase. Reduction of insulin, blood sugar levels. When they were too high, they came back to normal. And finally, platelet aggregation is less important as well as the reduction of the inflammation markers. So more than 66% of the subject cases decreased risk factors. Concerning the other 34%, what's actually happening with them, they don't often follow the instruction or just with an intermittent way, because they don't really believe in it. Or because we, doctors, do not explain it well to them. Let's take an example. The oil of seeds that are obtained by a genetic selection. God knows that GMOs, unfortunately, you have it already in your country. You must pay attention. In France, it's certain that the public does not want them, but they are unfortunately injected. Therefore, the seed obtained by genetic selection oils, sunflower, soya bean, rapeseed, are rich with monounsaturated fatty acids. 
It means oleic acid that we find in olive oil, but they are devoid of polyphenols. There are no polyphenols. At one point we thought the quality and the value of the olive oil is oleic acid. It's a quality, but other oils have it. The main difference is that when you have olive force, olive plus, you have indeed oleic acid, but you have the polyphenols. Therefore, the percentage of the oleic acid in the Mediterranean diet, almonds, hazelnuts, avocado, is only slightly higher than the other diets. However, if you have polyphenols, then it will change. We have greater efficiency, so the effectiveness of olive oil is mainly related to polyphenols. That is what we are trying to say in Bordeaux, with the Bordeaux wine, because we made great useful studies. We are encouraging many people to drink wine. The problem is that when we tell them to drink a litre, we should tell them to drink a small amount rather, which is not quite the same thing. So, here's an interesting study. We take 200 men from 20 to 60 years old, who were taken from different countries, southern countries, or countries like Germany, Denmark or Finland. We made three experimental sequences of eight days, each one with an intake of 25 milligrams per day, or three types of olive oils, with different concentration in polyphenols. 366 per kilogram, 164, half the concentration basically, or even a small dose of 2.7 kilo. What do we observe? We observe an increase in HDL cholesterol, that's to say good cholesterol, from 1.22 to 1.74 or 0.96. This good cholesterol, which I might remind you, is essential for the function of our hormonal system. Don't forget that to have good corticoids manufactured by cortical hormones against the stress of the day life, we need good cholesterol. Ladies, you need good cholesterol, not only for your cortical hormones, but also for your ovaries to be, always be beautiful. And for us, gentlemen, we need, in order to be in good physical shape, as we say, a quality testosterone, which means to have a formation of this testosterone by a good HDL cholesterol.